All right, my people, we have lesson 1.3.1, exponents. So we're taking a new direction here. We're going to start looking at exponents and seeing that exponents are really a uh, way to simplify multiplication. And they're kind of like a shorthand, uh, a way to make things, uh, numbers that are multiplied by, uh, uh, by themselves, make them easier to write down instead of writing every single number. Now when we talk about exponents, we have something called a base and we have the exponent with it. So if I've got x to the fourth, the base is the x, and the four would be the exponent. I can't spell today. Okay, good. All right, so this just means that I have four x's that have been multiplied by each other. Now it doesn't. Our base does not have to be a variable. You could have something like three to the sixth power, and three to the sixth power. Still, the base is three. And the six would be the exponent. And we're going to even see later on that you could have the exponent be the variable if you wanted to. So the exponent can go anywhere. The base doesn't have to be a variable. Remember, this does not mean 3 times 6 and you get 18. It means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. It's just a lot of 3s, okay? So when we expand it, what we just want to see is that we can rewrite it in the unsimplified form. So for instance, y to the seventh just means y times y times y times y times, should have used a smaller number, uh, times y times y times one, two, three, four, five, six, times y. Okay, now you see why they use exponents. This would be ridiculous to have to write down if we didn't have exponents. The next one I've got five, and then times the quantity two to the third. So what this means is with this parentheses, it means the five gets multiplied, and then it gets multiplied by a 2m, by another 2m, and by another 2m. So what we're seeing here is that the two and the m are multiplied three times, not just the m. So five times 2m times 2m times 2m. So on the next part, we've got x to the third, raised to the second. So this means that this is x to the third times x to the third, but we still have exponents in here, so this isn't expanded. So then this x to the third becomes three x's, and then the other x to the third becomes three x's. So what we're really talking about is six different x's. And a lot of people will think, oh, this answer is x to the fifth. No, if you expand it, you see that you actually have six x's there. The next one, we have x's and y's. So this is four times five x's. So x times x times x times x times x. Gosh, that's many x's. And then only two y's. Oh, thank goodness. Y times y. All right, so that's just expanding it. And this is just kind of showing you, it kind of gives you an idea of how some of the operations work. Like if you really look at it, you can see here, it looks like we multiply these two numbers because we've got all those, okay? But it also, if, if you ever have trouble like remembering rules or whatever, go back to expanding it and you'll can, you can just at that point count up how many of each variable that you have. All right, moving on. Now we're gonna talk about simplifying these. Now in this particular problem like this, I don't really like this because if I had to plug in numbers or something, I got to plug in the x here and I got to plug in the x here. I'd have to plug in the y here and I had to plug in the y here. Like if I was evaluating for something. So when we simplify, we only want a single x variable and a single y variable, but I have multiples of them. But what we can do is use the power of one to simplify some of this. Here's what I mean. On top, I've got an x and an x. Oh my goodness, is that eight y's? It is. We gotta rethink some of these problems. Okay, eight y's. Y, y. There's four, four more. Y, y. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, two more. Why? Why? All right, so those are all in the numerator. I've got all of those variables in the numerator. In the denominator, I've got an x right here, and that goes with that one. I got no more x's, and I got two y's. So I'll put a y under this one and another y under this one, and I've got no more y's. Now look what I have here. x over x, that is the number one. So this becomes one. Y over Y. I should really practice how to make my ones because this isn't very good looking. Oh well, Y over Y, that's one. You get the point. This one also becomes a one. Oh, I'm out of practice. So basically, this X over X becomes one. This Y over Y becomes one. This Y over Y becomes one. And anything times one is one, so we can ignore those. And now what are we left with? Well, I'm left with one X on the top. And I'm left with one, two, three, four, five, six Y's on the top in the numerator. Sorry, not the top. Sounds poor. All right, so uh, over one, or we can just say x times y to the 6. So you can kind of see what's happening here is it looks like we are subtracting the exponents when we do that. Uh, next problem is we're going to look at all of these other ones and reduce them. Okay, so I would suggest that you try to break them down and then Try to get some ones out of the way so that you can reduce them a little bit. The first one's pretty simple. The last one is going to be a little bit harder because we've got some numbers there. But uh, I think you should be able to do that. All right, so try it out. I'm going to hit the pause button and then write down my answers. All right, here's my answers. So the first one, I've got an x over an x, so I made a 1 over there. And all I'm left with is two x's in the numerator, so that's x to the second. The second one, I got a little tricky. I didn't follow like right in all of those x's. So I knew that x to the fifth could be split up into x to the second and x to the third, because there's still five x's there. There's two here, there's three here. So then I just put x to the second over x to the second, and now all I'm left with is x to the third and y. So my answer is x to the third times y. For this one, I did the same little trick. I turned y to the or w to the third into w to the second times w, because there's still three w's there. And then I had a w to the second, so there's my big one, so I can get rid of them, because one times anything is just the number. And then I'm left with a w and five more w's, so I've got w to the sixth. On the last one, with those numbers over there, the 16 and the eight, I saw that 16 was eight times two, so I split that one up into eight times two, and then the bottom, I have the 8 to make the 1 there, so those kind of cancel each other out. And I'm left with a 2. And then I split up z to the 3rd into z to the 2nd and z. So there's still 3 z's there. And I've got a z to the 2nd on the bottom to make 1. So all I'm left with is 2 times z. And my answer is 2z. This same process you can probably, you've probably done or you will do in your science classes, especially when you get to chemistry. So scientific notation follows the same, exact, uh, the same exact process, basically. So in this one, when we have 12 times 10 to the ninth, we can split this one up into 12 is 4 times 3, and then times 10 to the ninth. So I've got three tens on the bottom. So I'm going to call this 10 to the third times 10 to the sixth. So I still have nine tens up there. On the bottom, this is going to be four. I don't have any other numbers on the bottom, so that's just going to be a one. My 10 to the third is going to be 10 to the third. And then this is just a one because I'm all out of it. So I got four times 10 to the third on the bottom, and then 12 is four times three. 10 to the 9th is 10 to the 3rd, 10 to the 6th. 
All right, so using the big one, I can get rid of that section because that equals one. Four divided by four is one. The 10 to the third and the 10 to the third cancel each other out because 10 to the third divided by 10 to the third is one. So what am I left with? I'm left with three times 10 to the sixth. So my final answer is three times 10 to the sixth power. All right, let's look at the next one. A little bit tricky. So what does it have up there? Well, it's got squaring. So this is eight times eight times 10 to the third times 10 to the third. I've got two eights and I got two 10 to the thirds. On the bottom, let's see. I've got a 10 to the first. And I got four times 10 to the first. All right, now that I've broken it down like that, let's split these up into ones. So this eight can be split up into four times two. So that's what I did with this first eight right here. I split it up into four times two. And I'm going to write my other eight because I didn't split that one up. Okay, so on the bottom, I've got a four from right here. And then I've got a one and a one. Now let's look at our powers of 10. So I've got a power of 10 to the first on the bottom. Well, this one is 10 to the 10 uh, three times. So I'm going to do one of the times here and then make it 10 to the second. So now 10 to the first and 10 to the second, there's still three tens being multiplied. So that's this one right here. So this one became these two. And then there's no more tens on the bottom in the denominator. I keep calling it the bottom. I'm sorry. All right. And then we've got 10 to the third over one. All right. Let's look at our ones. I've got a one here. Okay, so those will reduce each other because one times one is, or four, four divided by four is one. And one times anything is just one, or just the number. Uh, this one right here, that can be reduced. So the big one gets rid of that. And so what are we left with? I am left with two times eight, which is 16, times, and I've got two tens here and three tens. So that's a total of five tens. But I got a little bit of a problem. In scientific notation, all of the answers have to have the first number as the ones place. Right now, the first number is in the tens place. Well, 16 is 1.6 times 10. Is it not? It is. So I'm going to change 16 into 1.6 times 10 to the first. And then it's going to be times 10 to the fifth. So scientific notation, you have to have your decimal right here. And 16 is 1.6 times 10, right? So my final answer in scientific notation would be 1.6 times 10. And there's one 10 here and five tens here, so that'd be 10 to the sixth power. Scientific notation, done. All right, let's move on to the next part. Okay, there are some errors on these problems. Let's see if we can find them. Okay, so the first one, they're saying that h to the third, h to the fourth, and k should be h to the twelfth times k. So is that true? Well, I've got three h's here, four h's here. That's seven h's. But here, they've got 12 h's, way too many h's. So that is incorrect. because they multiplied the exponents. 
and it looks like they should have added the exponents. All right, the next one. So looking at this one, I've got 39 divided by 3. 39 divided by 3. 3 does go into 39. It goes into 13 times. So the integer or the uh, coefficient, the number out front, is correct so far. All right, looks like they've got four p's on the top and two p's on the bottom. So if I split these up, I'm going to be only left with two p's in the numerator. So p to the second, that's right. Over here, I've got five q's on top and two q's in the denominator. I keep saying top and to bottom. Sorry, numerator, denominator. So uh, it looks like when I reduce them, I would only have three q's on top in the numerator. <laughs> this is correct. I know it's been a long day. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, I've got nine to the second in the numerator. And I've got 9 to the third in the denominator. So I've got more 9s in the denominator. So if I was splitting this up into 9 to the second, I'd put a 9 to the second here to make 1. And then I'd still have a 9 to the first left over for our 9s. So it looks like I should have 9 to the first in the denominator. So that's correct. For the 5s, uh, I've got a 5 to the second on the bottom and a 5 to the third on top. So I'm going to split the 5 to the third to 5 to the second times 5 to the first. And then we could see with our big ones that this makes 1 and this one makes 1. So I have 5 in the numerator and 9 in the denominator. So that one's correct. All right, so go down through the rest of them and go ahead and try them out and we'll check your answers in just a second. Three, two, one, hit the pause button now. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. So we ended on the C, right? So we go over to part D and this one's incorrect. See how we started with a base of three? We're counting how many threes that we're multiplying not how many nines we're multiplying. So the bases, it looks like, don't get multiplied here. So that base should be three. It should be three to the seventh. Part E, uh, this is actually correct, except they didn't give their answer in scientific notation. Um, so if you start with scientific notation, usually you're supposed to leave the answer in scientific notation. So 18 is the answer but that would be 1.8 times 10 to the first, because remember you're not allowed to have um, a the first number be in the tens place. The first number has to be in the ones place. So 18 is 1.8 times 10. So that's why I wrote it as 1.8 times 10 to the first. Next one, now this is incorrect because I broke it down. I had five w's in the denominator. So when I made my big one to get rid of the w to the second here, I still had three w's left in the denominator. And then this one magically moved it to the numerator instead. That should be the denominator. It should be one over w to the third is our answer. So that one's incorrect. For the next one, this one is incorrect because we were squaring this. That means that there's two sevens here, not just one seven. And that means there's two 10 to the thirds as well. So when I started reducing it, 7 divided by 3.5 is 2. So I got 2 times 7, which is 14. And then I had 6 10s on top, or in the numerator, and 2 10s in the denominator, which means I'm going to be left with 10 or 4 10s. And then this is not in scientific notation. Remember, we need to have the first number be in the ones place. So I changed this to 1.4. Remember, it's 1.4 times 10. So I needed an extra 10 over here uh, for scientific notation to work. This one over here, I broke it down. Uh, the fives made a one. And then I had a two left in the denominator. And then the g to the fifths made a one. And then I had 45 of the g's left in the numerator. So this one ended up being correct. And then I was incorrect 
because this one is saying x to the second, x to the second, x to the second, x to the second. And there's a total of eight x's there, not just six of them. Looks like they just took these two numbers and added them, but uh, that's not how that works. And we can see it doesn't work when we expand it. So we get x to the eighth. All right, our methods and meanings. Let's look at scientific notation. Scientific notation is a way to write really big numbers or really small numbers, especially like when you're looking at distances between stars or things like that. The, the numbers are huge. Or when you're looking at uh, tiny, um, tiny things under a microscope or something, their dimensions are super small. And there's going to be a lot of decimal numbers in there, or there's going to be a lot of zeros at the end of your problem. So these are ways that we can write things that are either really big or really small. Okay, so the x in scientific notation means multiplication. It doesn't mean it's a variable. Um, so 2.56 times 10 to the fifth is actually uh, 2.56. So we would have... Uh, five zeros. So I'd start moving this over five times. One, two, three, four, five. So this would be, what's that, 256,000. So 5.32 times 10 to the six. That means I need to move over the decimal six times. So one, two, and then I need four zeros after that. So that's why it's 5,320,000. Over here, 3.07 times 10 to the negative 4. When we have a negative exponent, that means we're going to move the decimal back uh, to the left. So I'm going to move it over once, and then I need to move it over three more times. So there's going to be three zeros there. So it's 0.000307. Okay, in order to change like a number like this into scientific notation, first you write the 25.6 into 2.56 times 10. So I'm just moving the decimal over one. And then now I have a 10 to the first and a 10 to the fourth, so it becomes 10 to the fifth there. Just make sure to write some of that stuff out. Like I said before, on the methods and meanings, you don't have to write the whole thing, but definitely show how to convert something that's not quite in a scientific notation into uh, the actual uh, uh, scientific notation that we need. You know, you have to be like specific in the way that you write them. So scientific notation has to have the first number in the ones place. That is all. Enjoy. Bye-bye.